Are you sick of living in the shadow of someone else? Need some help learning to love yourself and tap into your unique strengths or embrace your leadership potential so you can thrive in your life. This is Empower with Nancy. Let's start the show. Oh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode with Empower with Nancy. And I have a special guest today, um, Pastor Ovella Davis, and we're going to talk about discovering your purpose. And Pastor Ovella Davis is a native of Detroit, a certified purpose development coach, trainer, author, and speaker. Her journey to discovering her purpose began at the tender age of 18, following a sudden death of her mother. She holds a background in mass communication with Henry Ford Community College and has trained under some of the most re-owned thought leaders, including Zig Ziglar, Dr. Miles Monroe, Les Brown, and John Maxwell. In 2022, she has earned her coaching certification from the Purpose Development Institution at Atlanta, Georgia. Beyond her professional achievements, Pastor Abella is a dedicated mother of three adult children, a daughter who has led sales manager at Marriott Hotel Detroit, a son who plays for the NFL Dallas Cowboys, and another son who is a Disney performer in Orlando, Florida. And lastly, she is such a proud grandmother of two grandchildren. Thank you, Pastor Abella. It's such a pleasure to have you on my podcast today, and I'm super excited for our show today. Thank you, Nancy. It is so good to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity. You are so welcome. So today, again, we're going to really talk about discovering our purpose and what does that mean? And a few of the topics we're going to talk about is uncovering your true purpose, the root, not the fruit, emotional purpose, and the five components of purpose. And what does that all mean to us? And one of the things that really stuck out with me when Ovella and I met probably about, I think it's been about a month ago now, right? Time flies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of our second conversations, we were talking about the purpose. I want to also mention to you that she created and wrote a book, Victory is Your Purpose. Yes. And it has become the most popular self-development book. And I personally purchased the book on Amazon because you can get it on Amazon, right, Ovella? Yes. yes. And it is a simple, easy read and it is very, very powerful. When I started to read it, I literally could not put it down. I started to read it like maybe right the same day that I got it and then I got distracted because I had to do some stuff and I said, you know what, I'm going to start all over and I read it from the beginning to the end. And then I text you, Ovella. Yes. Beautiful, straight to the point, powerful book. So one of the things that really stuck out to me was root, not the fruit. And what does that mean in discovering your own purpose? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you again. I'm really thankful for this opportunity. I really appreciate you and uh, what you do and just the dialogue we've been able to have. It's been so powerful and such a chemistry uh, connecting. So uh, I'm just really grateful as well. But uh, when you ask about the root and the fruit, uh, as human beings, we have a tendency uh, to look at surface value of each other. And even in our own lives, a lot of times we may see that someone may be, uh, they seem like they're angry a lot. They seem like they may be combative or maybe they're just not as happy as one would think that they could be. And so a lot of times we make an assessment on what it is that we see in their character. And so a lot of times if we're not sensitive or discerning or even trained to look beyond what we may see on the surface, we may misjudge one another and even ourselves. And so, of course, that's what you and I do as coach and trainers. We don't just look at the fruit of an individual's life or fruit of the circumstance. We want to go deeper because it has grown out of something, especially when there's negative emotions. It's grown out of something. And so that's what we try to do is to try to get to the root 
of the problem and not just deal with the fruit. And uh, sometimes that's very difficult and we need someone else to help us uh, to take that deep dive into our personalities, into our personal self, to maybe take that road to travel back sometime when you were a child, what it is that you experienced that may be producing fruit, unproductive fruit in your life, but you never thought about it that way. So that's what I mean by looking at going to examine the fruit and not just the fruit. Well said, and, and it's so true because a lot of times, even with my clients, so, and I always tell them up front, we have to figure out the patterns because we all have patterns that we experience with the challenges and why we're facing these challenges. And then we don't understand and dissect the root cause of that. And we tend to get emotionally involved and then yes. we just give up. Right. Yes. Or it, yes. it turns into an argument or it, you lose a friend or you lose a job because of the emotions you put into that. And it stems from somewhere. And that's where we have to figure out, like you said, go back to the root cause of this. Yeah. It, it could be maybe you just have always taken things so personal because maybe a parent or sister or brother or boss always made you feel bad about mm -hmm. you or not good enough. And then that sticks with us and it carries us all through our lives. And how do we get through it? And a lot of times, Pastor Adela is, we don't know how. Why? Because we don't even know who we are ourselves in order to figure out that pattern. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, it can be difficult because when we're talking about going deep within, a lot of times people may have literally what people can do. They can block out, especially when it's trauma. They can block out and, and somehow they actually forgot what happened to cause this pain or to cause this a mode of expression. And then through a counselor, when we say, well, let's talk about your childhood. What's some of the things that you experienced that were painful or some things that maybe you didn't want to talk about uh, that was so challenging to you? Let's try to examine those places, understanding that when we take the the gauze or the Band-Aid off of that wound, it's going to be painful initially. But like any other wound, we have to uncover it. We need to do to clean it. And then it's going to come up. The pain is going to come up. The uh, discouragement, the trauma, sometimes we ruminate. But with the help of a, a trainer, or coach such as yourself, we can bring it up and we can bring it out now and not just repress it, which is what people do. And it does turn into emotional expressions, negative emotional expressions. And sometimes, I mean, you and I probably were honest, sometimes we have days and we may wake up and just don't feel this great coach, right. <laughs> pastor, or, or anybody. It just, And so we have to actually, okay, well, why am I feeling this way? Uh, we're trained to go within, ah, I remember, okay. I, it, it could be something that happened on the news that disturbed you emotionally and it stuck with you. And the next day you had this emotional response to something, but you didn't really process it. So understanding that we're going to have emotional responses to almost everything because emotion, let's look at the word, it's energy in motion. Emotion is energy in emotion, in energy in motion. So motion means that it moves. So sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down and that's not, doesn't have to be to the extent of bipolar. It's just part of being human, but having the the maturity, the strength and the wherewithal to say, you know what, the way that I'm feeling and the way that I've been feeling is coming from somewhere. And that's why we take the deep dive and look at the, the, the root of it. Right. And I love that you said, we too as coaches go through the same thing, right? The, mm -hmm. the difference is we know how to dissect right and figure out what is the root cause and and get back up on our feet and know that at the end of the day everything is going to be in our favor um, and we, we are no different than our my audience no different than our clients we all face the same situation right so thank you for yes. that yes you're welcome yes the next thing I want to talk about is uncovering your true purpose. The journey begins. How do we uncover our true purpose? I would love for you to take a little bit of your book. Remember the first conversation that you and I had? 
that uh, it was, it's just so powerful. And we talked about the sperm, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be open. Everyone knows that are my listeners. I'm very open, and transparent in my podcast. So let's talk about the, the true purpose of uncovering that. And what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. So this actually came from a revelation. I'm a musician and musicians, we think a different way. We kind of bring components together and create something. And so I don't know why that word sperm um, kind of stuck out of me, even when I was in school. And that's in my book. I talk about why is this word? It, it's almost like it has more to it than what is being explained, what the definition is. And as I grew up and I began to teach and get to coach more, I just got this revelation of the sperm is it is an entity by itself that has no purpose, but once the sperm reaches the egg, now the purpose can prevail. Either one of them without each other have no purpose except for when, when they come together, then we have the purpose of the sperm, which is to make a whole individual from the sperm and the egg. And so being made whole, the sperm, the acronyms of it begin to speak to me about the five opponents or characteristics that we all have that we need to pay more attention to because if you understand these components that you are not just a physical being, we are physical, we live in these physical bodies and yes, we are physical, but we're also emotional, we're also mental, we're also spiritual and we have to be responsible. So the acronyms of the S-P-E-R-M is spiritual, physical, emotional, responsible, and mental. And these five areas of our life, when we learn to examine them and see how are we faring in each of these components, so in other words, if you're physically strong and you work out and you're an athlete and, and you do everything that's necessary for your physical body, but emotionally you're wrecked, then you're not whole, you're not balanced. And a lot of times people compensate like that. You can find some of the biggest, greatest athletes and they become these great, <laughs> look like giants and kings. But sometimes when you have conversations, and I know you know about this, you see that sometimes it's really a little boy that was never, never addressed his emotional trauma or his disappointment and discouragement. So he has this, we can call it an illusion that because he's strong, he's all together. Well, that's not necessarily so. And the same with the other components. I believe that we have been made with the breath, the breath of God, breath is spirit. And that's how we became a living soul, the breath and soul spirit, which means that we are spiritual as well. And that's a component to ourselves who become in whole, but how much have you done to develop your spiritual life or your spiritual body? Because you can be physically strong, but not spiritually strong. And if you're all physical, when storms happen, you really don't have the fortitude to have the faith that say, hey, I can, I can make it through because that's what that spiritual part of it. So in the book, I talk about those five areas that we need to examine. Are you strong spiritually? What are you doing for your spiritual life? Are you strong physically? What are you doing for your physical life? Are you strong emotionally? Are, are you responsible? You, you can be the greatest spiritually minded person, but if you don't pay your bills on time and you don't handle business, you're still off balance. You're not whole. And I found that in my own life and those who I train and teach and pastor, that we talk about these five components that when you can begin to, first of all, recognize them. And then say, I'm going to do something to develop my spirit, to develop my body. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to watch what I put into my eyes and my ears. You begin to pay attention to your emotional self. People that bring you down, you got to be careful about being around that energy because it, what does it do? It, it depletes you. It doesn't empower you. And so examining these areas will help us to become the best version of ourself. And so that's why I wrote victory is your purpose. And, and going back to the sperm, you know, there's only one sperm that can penetrate that egg, right? Out of 500 million, three to 500 million is what fertility specialists say that a man releases. So if there is only one that can enter that egg and that one sperm gets in there and then that egg changes form and then it repels all of the other sperm. And that's when conception begins. Well, you and I were the ones that won. So we were winning before we were born. 
we were born to win. Victory is our purpose, but life happens and we have to learn how to balance and manage these other areas. And that's what I found to be so powerful and very beneficial. It is extremely powerful. And I love the analogy of that because it really is true. And that's where a lot of times when you say on the outside, I just had a session with my client today about that, where on the Outside, we feel like we're on the top of the mountain and people look at you and say, oh my gosh, she has it together. Like she's living on the top of the mountain, the best life and everything. But in the inside, you're completely broken. And when we are completely broken in the inside, we get to the point where we build that block and then we just, we, we give up and we don't know what to do. Right. We're unbalanced, like you said, yeah. Completely mentally, yeah. physically, and emotionally. Yeah. And it can look, you know, we are masters of disguise, right? We can look, <laughs> we yeah. can look great. We can look the part and we do that most of the time. We wear masks and we hide. But when you find people that you may find that has those attributes and seem to be strong, it's because of self-development and investing in your development. Some things can be, uh, maybe you can grow out of them and maybe some things you can pray out. But I found that a lot of things have to be developed out. We have to develop to become this whole person that we were created to be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about when you're working in the juvenile detention center in helping these people, these kids that are going through a lot of challenges in their lives. What are some of the patterns that you see? Yeah. So one of the biggest challenges I find, and it's not just with the youth, it really is a human challenge, humanity. I got my certification, received it from Purpose Development Institute in Atlanta, Georgia. And our researchers spent 20,000 plus hours studying personal development, professional development. Um, and one of the things that they have uncovered is what they have deemed to be PDD. And PDD is Purpose Deficit Disorder. And I just find that that was one of the... Um, that was one of the trainings that attracted me to the Institute, Purpose Deficit Disorder, because I've always studied purpose and valued understanding it. But when it got to Purpose Deficit Disorder, um, it just really opened my eyes to so many things in humanity that when you don't know the purpose of a thing, most times abuse is inevitable. And uh, one of my, I, I call him my mentor, even though I never sat under him directly, but his teachings and his training, Dr. Miles Monroe, he said, there are three laws to purpose. Number one, everything created has a purpose. And number two, every purpose is not known. And number three, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. And that that's so true because I, I try to make a quick story. My son works for Disney World and I went to Disney World and they have Chinatown and I went to Chinatown and I saw these three beautiful dishes and they had gold and all of the colors. And I'm like, oh, I love that. I want to use this, but it's only three. Where's the set? And so I took the bowl to the checkout and I said, sir, where's the fourth dish to this? I need the set. And he said, that is not a set of dishes. He said, those are ceremonial bowls only to be used in religious ceremonies. And I was about to eat Cheerios out of them or a salad, right? <laughs> and so it just goes to show you that when you don't know the purpose for a thing, mm -hmm. abuse is inevitable. And so Dr. Miles Monroe says, when you don't know a purpose for money, then you'll abuse it. Mm -hmm. If you don't know a purpose for your spouse or your children, you can abuse them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the purpose for your life, then you'll abuse it because abuse is abnormal use. You're using it for something other than what it was created. So in the juvenile detention, these young ladies that come from um, underserved communities, a lot of times there's poverty. They have suffered trauma from rape, neglect. And the thing that they don't know is that they have been created with a purpose. And that's what I bring to them. And I let them know that your purpose has nothing to do with your academic achievement. Our purpose has nothing to do with the family that we're born into or our communities. Our purpose is our divine design. 
and that because you were born, you were born with a purpose. And how we begin to discover that is we begin to talk about passion. You know this, passion. What what is it that you love? That you you love this so well that if you never got paid to do it, you do that thing. You don't learn passion. You're born with a passion or you can grow to become passionate. But that thing that drew you, when you begin to acknowledge your passion, your passion can help to lead you to your purpose. And so I talk to them about like, what do you love? It's like, I love to cook. Okay, that's a good thing, you know, or I love animals. I'm like, oh, that's a good thing. So maybe you can become a veterinarian or maybe you can work at a zoo, do something that you love because that's really what the deficit is in purpose. We have not then I'll just say even raised in a way to say, let's go within and see what your divine design is, what's in you already. And then we can move you towards that direction and it'll fulfill your life. And purpose is, I think purpose is essential for everyone because if you don't know the purpose, a lot of times we're in places that we're not happy and can't be fulfilled in because it's just kind of contrary to our divine design. Yes. And you know, as we are, young and we're growing up, our parents don't, they don't tell us about the purpose. It's more of, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to get good grades, you have to work hard and be very respectful and just do your day. But to really go in within you to figure out who you are and what your purpose is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about that. Most people don't talk about the purpose. What are some of the ideas or suggestions that you can give to my audience of the purpose for themselves? Like, what are some of the things, just like one thing that they can look within themselves of their own purpose? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm, it's, it's raining on top of the car. Air conditioner is blowing, but we're good. <laughs> we're good. We're going to finish this. We're going to do this. Um, yeah. you know, I think the first thing that's most important, and I don't, know how many parents understand this how essential it is to talk about purpose but the first thing you have to know is that you have a purpose that you have been created in with a purpose and because if we can teach our children and not only teach them but pay attention uh, to what they gravitate towards. For example, uh, this is a funny story, but it's the truth. Um, when I was in school, I, I was academically well. I did well in my in my school years, and I would always get A's on my spelling test. And But in my day, we had what was called citizenship. So you can get a one, two, or three. <laughs> you too, Nancy, had citizenship? Oh, yes. Yes, we sure did. <laughs> right, right. And so I would always get A threes mm-hmm. <laughs> on my report card and my mother <laughs> my mother would always have to um, reprimand me about talking in school so I would finish my work but then I'd start talking to one of the kids or, or disrupting someone in my classroom and so my teacher said yes she does her work but she talks but watch my teacher did not know that talking was what I was gravitating towards, right? And I grew up and I became a speaker, I became a trainer, I became a teacher. And so, and even in the house, my sisters would get angry with me because I was the baby and they was like, be quiet, stop talking. (laughs) But that literally, that one little thing that I love to communicate, I love to talk and it it gravitated me towards purpose. Uh, When I got in high school, my, my speech teacher, I had to take a speech class and he, called me to start doing the McKinsey radio broadcast, which was where you talk over the intercom and say, right. boys basketball team is going to here and girls basketball. So he saw it and he gave me opportunity, but my passion for talking led me to my purpose. And so with our children, if we pay attention to them and see what they're gravitating towards, we have to introduce them uh, to different things because they have a purpose and everything that there is, if, if whoever's listening to your podcast right now, our podcast, if you look around in your room or your car or wherever you are, I could almost assure you, you won't find one thing. You can't see one thing that doesn't have a purpose. Mm-hmm. Everything that you look at right now was created with a purpose, you see, mm-hmm. and we're created. And we're created the same way. There was a divine design 
in the creator's mind for all of us. Everything created has a purpose. So the first thing I always tell people is that you must understand and accept this as a reality. I have been created with a purpose. And as I look and accept that truth now, let me go within and see what passions I have. What do I love? No one gives you purpose. You're like, I really love, it could be something as crazy. When I was young, I loved glitter. I used to, my mother would buy me glitter and I, we couldn't do nothing. I just sprinkled it just to look. Yes. <laughs> I love glitter. I love yeah. labeling anyway. <laughs> so we grew up and now it has a term called bling. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we, everybody seems to love bling, but nevertheless, that was not to lead me to a profession, but we can learn how to look at small things and see what we're passionate about. Sometimes it could be passionate, as we know, to volunteer. We want to help with the homeless. We want to help. All of these passions are created within us to lead us to purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love it. It is so powerful. Emotional purpose, the heart of your drive. Let's talk about your emotional purpose. What does that look like? I, I love this conversation when I do a purpose development training, especially with my teenagers, because I ask them, why do you think we've been given feelings? Why do we have feelings? Mm -hmm. Why do we have feelings or emotions? And they'll give me a variety of answers, you know. Um, but the thing that's amazing that what I try to get them to understand is that we all have feelings, we all know what it feels like to be angry, to be sad, to be happy. If you've ever experienced uh, rejection, the negative emotions, jealousy, you know, what it feels like to be bullied. If you've had all of these provoke emotions in us and I try to use it to the point and say, I believe. Now, I don't know the exact answer because I haven't talked to the creator face to face about it, but we're created with emotions and feelings that maybe it is so that we could understand and have more compassion one towards another. So in other words, if you know what it feels like to be angry and, and someone has done something to make you angry, maybe a sibling, then in understanding that, I think that he would hope that we would take that into consideration and say, being angry and, and treating people bad is not good. So I'm not going to make people angry. I'm not going to intentionally do this so that we could have more compassion for one another because you and I both know hurting people hurt people. And that hurt has come from somewhere. And, and our passion, you and I, is so that we can maybe, really put a cap, maybe put a cap on the negative emotions and stop the cycle where hurting people hurt other people, but recognize what this feels like and be more compassionate one to another. And have an open mind and understand where, why they feel the way they feel, why they said the way they said, you know, then to be emotionally involved in saying things that we don't mean to say just to shut them down, to hurt them. And then what purpose does that serve? Absolutely nothing. You walk away angry. You walk away with not accomplishing anything. So when we end up having conversation, have an open mind, listen, don't interrupt, and respond appropriately to where it's a win-win situation, right? It's not meaning not you're winning an argument, but the win-win situation is you're both understanding and communicating with one another to get the purpose of what you want to accomplish in that conversation, right? Yeah. So yeah. A, a, a lot of times those emotions, our emotions can get really so, it could take us down the wrong path or it could take us down the right path. And we, right, we people, as you and I both know, as coaches, we control our destiny. We control the way we want things to run. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. We're, we're back to the root now because mm -hmm. it, it is almost characteristic of humans who have been hurt to hurt other people. It's an expression of their pain. And mm -hmm. maybe no one had compassion on their pain or maybe you and I know there are millions of ways that people suffer trauma. 
but you have to get to a, a place and that's why it's so important to invest in your development because sometimes you do need help the coach or a trainer to say we're, we're going to help you work through this because mm -hmm. to continue this pattern not only is it uh, going to be destructive with the person that you are having problems with but it's toxic physically you may that feel initially, funny. yeah, you may mm -hmm. feel initially some relief from revenge, uh, ugly green monster of revenge. But over time, it literally is working internally. I, I have this wonderful guru and he's read, he's, he's read 600 books. He's amazing. And he told me, he said, Ovella, if you don't cry, your organs will. Mm, I like that. That is so true that is so true and sometimes we don't want to cry because it shows a sign of what weakness and we hold it in and when yeah. he and it's and when he says our organs will is because you're holding it in and it's affecting you internally mentally physically and emotionally so and let physically. it out. yeah and physically yes <clears throat> Yeah, I, I believe it's psychosomatic, that things are connected. The way that you're suffering emotionally and mentally literally has a physiological effect in our bodies. And that's how come Napoleon Hill, the great book, The Power of Positive Thinking, to change how your thoughts, because your, your thoughts, we know that, yeah, that you literally, I, I do this test to the kids when I'm in the uh, detention center, I said, how would you feel right now if I told every one of you that when I leave, they're going to let you leave with me? And they start smiling. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you just changed the way you feel just by what you thought. That's right. So if you decide that you want to feel better, then you have to change your thinking. Mm -hmm. It's in the mm -hmm. thinking. And so decide, I do want to be better. I, I don't want to hurt other people. I want to get to the root of where I am so that I can become the best version of me. And it's amazing because there's like a, I, I would like to say it's spiritual, but I can't explain it. But somehow when you begin to get positive, more positive things begin to happen. I can't, I'm it's sure there's a science with it. There is, it's energy, right? What you put out is what you will receive. What you think is what you will receive. And that is based off of our energy. Our thoughts, our minds control everything, right? And, and if we want to have, let's say we are overweight and we want to be skinnier, lose five, 10 pounds, you can. Don't look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh my gosh, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I just, none of these clothes fit. No one wants to look at me, I don't look pretty. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to lose weight thinking that way? No. Hmm. You're going to, when you say, you know what, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to eat healthier and I'm going to lose 10 pounds in, in the next 30 days. Yeah. And own it, right? Don't worry yes. about the physical piece of it. Just own it knowing that you are going to be able to lose that weight because you're yeah. already putting that process and that thought into your mind. Yes, yes. It's, it's amazing. The power of our, the ability to think is just amazing. The ability to imagine, uh, image, root word of imagine. And you and I, I'm sure we've done a lot of things that we had to first get the vision for it. And that yes. is what reinforces belief to say, you know what? I need to lose weight. Okay, so I'm going to accept this as a truth. Okay, I need to lose weight. And you may have to tell yourself that right there to again, we're dealing with acceptance. So I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. Okay, I need to lose weight. Okay, now, since I need to lose weight, what's the action plan? Well, I'm going mm -hmm. to lose weight by I'm going to increase water. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drink at least, you know, five bottles of water, four bottles of water. Then you put an action plan to it. I'm going to lose weight because I'm drinking water now. Here's what else I'm going to do. I'm going to start walking. If I just walk 10 minutes, matter of fact, I'm going to park further from the job than I normally do. So you put an action plan to what it is that you've decided you want to do. Don't think I'm fat, I'm overweight, I'm ugly, I can't. You have all the power. We have been given amazing power 
right between our ears. We have to make the decision this, I need to lose weight or I need to work on my attitude or whatever it is. First, accept that as your reality. This is what I need to do. Now, if you're in denial, then you probably need a coach. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, absolutely. But, you know, make it simple. What we, what we tend to do is we say, okay, we're going to lose weight. And now I have to do 50 things just to lose weight. I have to be at the gym for two hours. I have to starve myself i have to do all this no just take baby step stepping stones and then each and every time when you make it smaller those smaller goals become achievable and then you feel you know what i'm going to add another goal and i'm going to add another goal because you tend to get excited and that is good emotion because now you're taking that good emotion and that intention and applying it to what you want and what you're passionate about completing and doing. And that's where I always teach my clients, every day, simple free goals. I don't care if it's you have to put clothes in the, in the uh, wash or you know finish this one project. If you're not checking the box, then, and you're just looking at it and not doing it, how yeah. do you feel at that point yeah. in time? Yeah, yeah. If you don't feel accomplished. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're back to. Some things, you know, we can pray about and some things we may can counsel about. But most of the times we have to develop it out. You know, things have to be developed. And so you're developing the discipline of even accepting the thought of what you need to do. I need to change my thinking. I need to change. I need to lose weight. I need to begin to get to work on time. I'm always running, you know, just yeah. working on because these are all the components. Now, right now we're dealing with the mental part. That's the M and sperm, uh, doing the things that cause you to be mentally healthy and being uh, being on time and being early that causes you to feel better about yourself. It's like I did a good thing today. And when you develop those, the spiritual, physical, physical, emotional, responsible, and mental, and have literally an action plan. As you said, it doesn't have to be a big, you know, I got a thousand things to do. One small victory is yet a victory. And you know, a victory today, we scheduled our podcast. We didn't know we were going to have a storm today, right? And guess what you did? You didn't say, oh my gosh, I did that. We need to reschedule. You know, I'm not doing this. You chose to make it work. And it didn't matter. It didn't have to be perfect. You know, it is perfect because why? It's what we wanted. The whole podcast is organic. This is not so polished that it has to be so perfect. This is what happened. And we work with what we got. And it turned out to be phenomenal. You know what? I'm so sorry to cut you off. Um, You just said something so powerful. Work with what you have. Yes. That is that is such a powerful uh, place to begin to activate. Because a lot of times we always think if we had something more or if we could do something different or if I lived here or if I had this job or if I had this house, it's always and literally you're just making excuses. Mm-hmm. And we do that. We're, we're master excuse makers. We can do that in our sleep. Right. <laughs> right. But to work right now what I have. I don't have I don't have a treadmill, but I do have a sidewalk, right? Um, you know, I, I don't have a gym to go to, but I can do something right here. I can just sit on the floor and just start stretching my body a little bit today. Work with whatever you have. It's just so amazing because when you do the little win, it motivates you to get the next one. But it, the hardest part is we know is getting started and work right where you are. If you can't start a diet and cook in a gourmet meal, just increase your water and decide to eat less. That's right. That's right. Little yeah. wins are big wins. Are big right? wins. Yes. And, yes. And be grateful when you said, you know what? I may not have a treadmill, but I have a sidewalk. Be grateful that you have that sidewalk. Be grateful that you have the legs to walk on that sidewalk. There it is. In order to get what you want in life, be grateful. Thank God, whoever it is, your spirit guides, whoever you believe, that I woke up today putting my feet on the floor and I thank God for another day. Right? 
and today is going to be a good day. You get to choose the day that you want to have. So if you wake up and you stub your toe and say, oh, shit, I'm having a terrible day today. It's yeah. not going to go exactly what I want. You've already planted here. That is what you were thinking. Yeah. So that is what's going to happen. So, you know, um, in purpose development, I'm sorry. And in, no, in purpose yeah. development. And purpose development, it is making value out of the moment mm -hmm. and not letting the moment change you, but to take this moment and make it a valuable moment in whatever way you can, because this is where we start thinking about winning. Um, we tend to think of what's wrong a lot. Absolutely. And it's easy to think about what's wrong this is wrong and that's wrong. And it seems like once we get one or two things, then guess what? Look at, look at what happened today. Oh. My, my power went out of my apartment. I'm like, okay, I'll go to the park and I'll talk to her from the car. And we get set up and then the car, my phone says it's overheating because it's 95 degrees, <laughs> even though the air, okay, well, let me run back to the clubhouse and get in there. And then the battery, I mean, it's one thing after another, but guess what we did? We made value out of that moment. So guess what? I'll go back to the car. It's raining a little bit. And to keep, moving forward so even though things will go wrong guess what nancy and i are having a podcast today despite whatever happened right so we could look at the good that we're able to do not all of the wrong things that happen to try to be obstacles and it's the same thing with your life if you decide that i'm going to choose to think and be thankful for the good things. Well, I don't have anything to be thankful. You don't know my husband and you don't know my kids yes. and you don't know my financial situation. Yeah. But do you have clothes on your back? Do you have a shelter over your head? Do you have food on your table? Do you have, do you have the ability to button your own shirt? I mean, you can start being thankful for so many small things and an attitude of gratitude will begin mm -hmm. to transform you, right? Then, like you said, the energy begins to draw other things. And I have found, and this is a personal testimony, that the more that I'm thankful, the more things happen for me to be thankful for. Yes. So I and choose to be thankful. Funny. I could complain, but I choose mm -hmm. to find things to be thankful about. Yes. Well said. Well said. It is so true. So, so true. Where can my audience find you? I know that the, the book, I want to talk about that again. Victory is your purpose. And you can find this book on Amazon, right? Um, yes. Where else can they follow you? Thank you for asking. So um, I have a website that you can go to www.pastorministries.com. Pastor, use the letter O, not the number O, Pastor O Ministries .com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, O Vela Davis. But if you go to my website, it'll actually give you an opportunity to reach out to me. If you wanted to do a discovery call to uh, consider some purpose development, there's a page for that. If you just wanted to email me and reach out to me, we check our emails twice a day. So we'll make sure and get that. Um, but that's the best way to contact me is through the website or through um, Facebook. Now I told Nancy and I'm going to say it, I'm Wilma Flintstone becoming Jane Jetson, but I'm not there. <laughs> so I'm working on a team with Instagram. I have a page, but it's not as active as I'd like to be. And Nancy is helping me as well to, uh, to come up and to be a little bit more social media savvy. But I, I really just kind of surfaced with this book about four months ago. And it's like, you really got to get up there with social media now. So I'm on my way. But in the meantime, that's the best way to meet me. Wonderful, wonderful. And then my last question is, what does it feel like to be a NFL mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I gotta I be careful. What is, yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I gotta be careful for a few reasons. First of all, because my son may see this and like he'd be like, Mom, why'd you say that? <laughs> and yeah. then I have two other kids. It's like, you never talk about us. <laughs> so no, we're gonna it's, talk about your it's, it's, you, a, yeah, it's a running yeah. joke in the family. It's a joke. It it is a joke. And they know that I all love them equally and I talk about them all the time. But um, you know, my my son who's in the NFL, this is his eighth year 
Um, the last two years, he's been with the Dallas Cowboys, and before then, he was with the New England Patriots. And so, uh, he's a defensive tackle. He's huge. He's six foot five, three hundred and twenty pounds, size seventeen shoe. He's an actual giant. He's and when I see him, and if he ever wow. comes, and when he has time to come, and I live in an apartment, and he comes in, and I'm serious, I have to say, listen, you have to sit down. You cannot stand up and talk to me because I feel like I'm your child. So sit down. <laughs> but um, it is it is a wonderful, um, it, it's been a wonderful journey. And the most amazing thing about the journey is that um, I call him Q because he's so, he came so quick. He was eight pounds, eight and a half ounces. And my labor with him was literally an hour and 30 minutes. I mean, he, he, he came quick. Yeah. And so I call him. Yeah. And I'd have to tell that story on another, that's a whole nother adventure <laughs> because I literally had him in the car, but that's another adventure for another time. But um, the, the point is he was born big. He was always big again, back to purpose. And my husband and I, we recognize it's like this boy is huge, you know, and he loved to eat. And so um, watching what he, you know, did as far as loving to uh, be athletic. Um, so then we pushed him in that direction. We got him in, you know, youth programs for athletes for football. And to see that he literally is in his purpose, he was made big, God made him big. So mm -hmm. and now we have a big guy. So we're like, what can we do? How do we get him on his path? The same thing with my youngest son who uh, works for Disney World. Um, when he was maybe, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old. He was just enthralled with Disney. Loved Disney. Always wanted to watch Disney. One day I come home, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, my sinuses is up here crazy, but anyway, sorry I'm so transparent, but it's just me. Um, <laughs> um, but, but thank you. But he, um, I came home one day in the mail, and it was a envelope from Disney World addressed to my son, Kaylin Davis, who's like 10 or 11. I'm like, what is Disney World doing? He saw something on TV that you can send off for a Disney vacation. And he literally got, I guess he got his dad or somebody to mail it off. And they sent him the whole video for a DV, yeah. uh, for a Disney vacation. I mean, Disney literally called his name. And then when he graduated from high school, he came home one day and he said, hey, mom, I got an opportunity to do an internship um, at Disney World. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, so um, I'll get to go to Disney for six months. I'm like, really? He said, yeah. I said, so what does that mean? He's like, I'm moving to Disney. <laughs> like for six months. And so he went down there. We got him off straight away. You know, I took him down there. And it was a six-month intern program. And then he could re-sign up. Well, it's been seven years. Oh and he, goodness, yes, seven he's a performer years. for Disney. But Disney called his name. Again, purpose. And we, we watched this happen, you know. Wow. But he literally found his own path to that because he found out about the internship. And my Ooh. daughter, she's she's just a, she's, she's such a whiz in business. Even now, I'll call my daughter. I'm like, listen, I need you to, I need you to strategically think this through. And she will always have something just... I, she's amazing and so she navigated her path to now she's managing Marriott hotels and so again um it's 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 a wonderful thing to be an NFL mom but the greater thing is to know that I have three adult children and they are all on their path of purpose amen and they don't have to bother me <laughs> right right, right. Well, that's you know a joke what? that is no that is, that is, you love your kids all the same way. doesn't matter, you know, you know, NFL, you know, Disney or whatever it is that your children are in, you all love them the same. And you, it's a testament for you and your husband and how you brought your children up, right? With the mm -hmm. love and the support and the purpose and, you know, driving that to them and they become their own, right? No matter what we do as parents, that's you true. Know, you want you're gonna do the best that you can. There yes. is no book to become a parent. You learn as you grow. Even to this day, we're learning as our children have children and, yes. and how to give advice on that aspect. So we're constantly we're always gonna be parents no matter what age and what they go through. But we yeah. all love we all love them the same and they grow up and should be their own. Yeah. Can I speak to that for a second? I, I feel something oh, in that because, you know, um, I have two sisters and um, 
we're always dialoguing uh, with one another about just life lessons. And my sister said the most amazing thing. We were talking about our children. And she said, they came from us, but they're not us. Oh. And that that was revolutionary because you can do your absolute best in raising and training and teaching and creating opportunities. And our children don't always follow the path that's best for them. They don't okay. always do. And that is something that I've, you know, in counseling parents, the hardship and the heartbreak when your child ends up in jail or they end up on drugs or they end up in other traumas. And you have to come to that conclusion that yes, they, the, you, they're from you, but they're not you. And a lot mm -hmm. of times parents will have regret because, well, if I had done this better and if I had been a better parent at that time, but the truth is at that time, if you had known better, then you would have done better. And so I say, don't beat yourself up, but you still have a, a great power that you can pray that they find their purpose, that they find what they were created to do and be. That's a power thing to do to begin to pray because the creator is the one that created them with the power and purpose. And so you begin to pray that you may not have been the perfect parent. Maybe you were still struggling at the time, a time of having children. I'm counseling a lady later today that she had her son when she was incarcerated and she's really going through a lot about that. But it's never too late to start and it's never too late to begin to transform, first of all, yourself, I did my best. My best wasn't good back then, but now I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to pray and try to develop myself and hopefully ask God to help to lead them to their purpose. Because that's where life is fulfilled at when you are in your creative design. Beautiful way to end our episode, Pastor Avella. You nailed it. That is absolutely beautiful. Again, it was a pleasure. It's a pleasure and an honor to know you. It's a pleasure to have you as a guest on my podcast. And I know we will have many more gatherings together. Um, yes. And purpose, because you and I already said, there's a purpose for you and I. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you, everyone, for being part of my podcast. And you all have a beautiful day and um, a blessed one as well. Thank you.